Croatia has um, more than a thousand islands. Depending on how you count them, it's uh, 1,185 or 1,246. And uh, with so many islands to choose from, uh, how do you know which one is the one for you? And are they all the same or are they all different? Actually, there are some incredible things that you would never expect to find on a Croatian island. And uh, here are just 25 of them. The island of Vis in Dalmatia is the birthplace of cricket in mainland Europe outside of the UK. Back in, I think it was 1809, there was a uh, British soldier called Captain William Host, and he was stationed there. He started playing cricket. This tradition was picked up again about uh, 20 years ago, I think, by a returning diaspora from, from Australia called Rocky, and uh, he started the Vis Cricket Club. And so today, on the old airfield, you can actually play cricket. They have international tournaments there. They have an amazing restaurant next to it. This is now a 200-year-old cricketing tradition tradition on the island of Vis. Number two, also on Vis and Lastovo, you have the most fantastic submarine bases. During the time of Yugoslavia, Tito um, built some very, very uh, elaborate uh, fortifications. If you go to uh, both uh, Lastovo and Vis, and also Šibenik, I think, you can find these submarine bases and you can sail into them and they're, they're really, quite, uh, really quite special. The island of Brach, number three, has some really quite fascinating things to see, including the monastery of Blatza. In the middle of almost nowhere, you can only get there by walking even today and it's built into the rock. And of all the many, many fascinating things about Blatzer, I think the most interesting one is that there is a grand piano in there. This was actually brought by 12 priests, monks, and legend has it that they carried the grand piano while drinking 56 litres of wine over an eight hour period. Whatever the true story is, how that grand piano got in there, I have no idea. But that's just one of the bizarre things you'll find on Bratch. The, the other one that's really, really amazing is a place called Dragon's Cave. Uh, and this is above the village of Murovica. There's only one guy um, who can take you there. It's quite a hike up. I went there many, many years ago and I was a bit slimmer. Carved into the rock in this cave are these amazing sort of um, images of dragons and so on like that. And uh, how they got there, nobody knows for sure. And it's in a very, very remote spot. But uh, this is what Dalmatian islands are like. They have very, very, very um, unique and very interesting and unexplained things. Number four um, is uh, Palmejana Sveti Clement, uh, which is one of the is the biggest of the Pakleni Islands, just opposite Hua Town. Um, has its very own arboretum. It's one of the three arboretums in the whole country: one in Tostano and one in Opaga in, in Varishden County. If you go there, you just see this incredible collection of trees from all around the world. It's it's really quite spectacular. Probably the most cultured island in Croatia, I would say, and uh, it's definitely worth a visit. The food's fantastic, and as are the beaches. And then if you go from Palmejana to Hua Town itself, you uh, have have um, another quite incredible claim. It's the oldest public theatre in Europe, built in 1612. Um, and it's, uh, it recently reopened about two years ago after a 20 year renovation. And it's just uh, on the main square on the first floor above the Arsenal building. Beautiful, beautiful building. If you head up towards Istria, you go to Briuni. This is one of my favorite uh, islands in many ways. It's probably the, one of the most random things you'll find there. You'll find um, zebras as an elephant. Uh, you'll find a lot of stuffed exotic animals from all around the world. And this was basically the headquarters of Tito during the time of Yugoslavia. And he would spend uh, almost as much time on Briuni um, as he would elsewhere. And he received no less than 60 heads of state, including uh, Yasser Arafat, including Gaddafi. Because he was uh, very prominent in the non-alignment movement, he had um, many visitors from exotic parts of the world. It became customary when visiting Tito to bring an exotic animal from your country. So Queen Elizabeth, when she came, she brought Shetland ponies, which you can still see today. Indira Gandhi came from India and she brought two elephants. Uh, when I was there a few years ago, there was still one left. Uh, there's all sorts of things. There's a golf course there. Obviously, a lot of these indigenous animals didn't survive in the in the, in the climate in Briuni, so uh, uh, Tito had them stuffed. So you can see a stuffed giraffe and things like that there. But uh, to me, one of the most interesting things there on Briuni is you have all these photographs of Tito meeting all these heads of state. It's, it's, there's about 60 photographs all around. It's all these incredible world leaders from around it, so it's, it's, it's interesting to see. And you can also go for a drive in the Cadillac that uh, Tito had. And on the dashboard, there is a, um, a photograph of him with Churchill and him with his wife. The island of Mliet, uh, half of it is a national park, and one of the most beautiful parts of it is right in the center, you have an island within an island. Uh, there's this uh, beautiful Benedictine monastery, which is completely surrounded by water. And so you go to an island, and then you have to take a boat to get to this part. Uh, it's quite interesting. 
Number eight, I think it's uh, probably the most interesting and bizarre food festival I've ever been to in my life is the Pukiada, which is uh, a Dormouse festival. And so this is what they have on Khvar. There are only three places in Croatia where they do hunt and eat Dormice. Uh, there's one village on Khvar, there's one village on Brach, and there they put them on the grill. If you go to Gorski Kotar, then they put the uh, Dormice into a delicious goulash. Uh, but it's uh, really quite an interesting and special event. Croatia is known as a very safe country, and perhaps that's due to its uh, topography. If you go to the island of Balenets and you look from above, there is an incredible array of stone walls. And if you look from above, it looks exactly like a human fingerprint. It's not something you'll appreciate on the ground, but if you get a drone or something up from above, it's just, uh, it's fantastic. Olives play a huge role in the Mediterranean, and uh, in Croatia, it's no exception. You have three really quite special places for olives, I think. One is uh, the island of Shipan, which is part of the Elefiti Islands close to Dubrovnik. And this has the most olive trees per capita in the world. Very, very dense collection. It's uh, extremely high quality as well. Uh, if you go to the island of Khvar, you have what I think is one of the top 10 uh, oldest olive trees in the world in Zastrzyzce. It's been dated back to 2,500 years, which is about the time of the arrival of the ancient Greeks to Starigrad. And the most spectacular place on an island in Croatia to see olive trees is without doubt the little settlement of Lun, right at the end of the island of Pag. And there you have over a thousand olive trees. There's a little amphitheater in there where they have concerts in the summer. But uh, I can't remember how many, but there's quite a number of those trees that are more than a thousand years old. And it really feels like a biblical setting. And it's, it's really, really, really beautiful and very special, very peaceful place. So uh, when you go to Pag, you can party on Zurche. But then if you want to just really get away into nature, then I recommend you keep going right to the end to the little place called Lun and just immerse yourself and the olives and the olive culture there. Number 14, slavery is, uh, is something that has been abolished in uh, a lot of the world, but uh, Croatia has two significant dates. One is from uh, 1416, which is when Dubrovnik, or the Republic of Ragusa, as it was called then, abolished slavery. But actually the first place in the world to abolish slavery was some 200 years before Dubrovnik, and that was the island of Korcula. Number 15, one of the people I was most pleased to meet when I lived on Hoa was a Polish lady called Anna, because she was actually the first person ever to produce craft beer on a Dalmatian island. There's a beautiful brewery called Wunitowa, which is named after her husband. She makes incredible uh, combinations with uh, things like lavender and so on, and you can go and taste it in her little tasting room. And it's just for me, one of those magical things that somebody can come from Poland and fall in love and live on an island and then become the first person ever to make craft beer. The Kornati Islands are very barren, uh, they're a sailing paradise and they are really, really magical. And if you find these little bays where you find very, very simple restaurants offering fantastic lamb, which is the speciality around that part of Croatia. But there's one particular bay you come in and they have a barking raven. It's kept mostly in its cage because it actually tends to steal cigarettes from, uh, from guests and so on. But it actually says a few words and it barks. So uh, if you go into this particular bay, you can see this barking raven, it's quite bizarre. One thing I've learned about uh, life in Croatia is that property is something that causes lots and lots of problems. People tend to sort disputes out in different ways uh, than I would say back home. And so uh, I think there are like 4 million people in Croatia and there are 3 million ongoing lawsuits was a statistic I heard, 90% of which are property. If you go to the under Brach, somebody took a very unique way of trying to solve a dispute. These guys wanted to buy a house from a guy called Marco and Marco didn't want to sell. And so what they did was they built a house completely around him. But the guys building the house on the outside didn't actually finish the house because uh, as karma would have it, they were both killed in a shipwreck apparently. Number 18, the Island of Mliet is one of the most beautiful, and as I said before, half of it is a national park. But it's also one which, uh, over history, has had some uh, troubles with uh, shipwrecks. It's a place of complete legends because two very famous people were allegedly shipwrecked on, uh, on Mliet, uh, and that was St. Paul and also Odysseus, way back in, uh, in the Greek times. So uh, when you're sailing around Mliet, uh, admire the beauty, but uh, keep your eye on the water and the winds and stuff so it doesn't happen to you. Number 19, civilization on the islands. Uh, human habitation has been on the islands for many, many years. But if you go to Vela Spila in Vela Luka on Korcula, then there is evidence of uh, life going back there to some 20,000 years. It's an incredible cave, well worth a visit. And also on Dugi Otok, that's another one which has a very, very long tradition. I think the human remains there have been dated back to 11,000 years. Beautiful these islands are, but they've been, they've been enjoyed by, by humans for, for millennia. 
Number 20 is the Ande de Tres, which is a beautiful island close to Loshin in the north of uh, Croatia. Its unique claim to fame, I guess, is that it has these uh, incredible um, Tres griffin vultures. And uh, if you're into that kind of wildlife, they have an extremely interesting griffin uh, echo center where you can go and learn all about uh, the, the, the vultures and uh, find out how they're preserved and looked after them. Number 21, uh, Croatia's had a very uh, troubled past with uh, invasion, with war and so on. Some of the islands have been used for uh, purposes other than tourism. There are two islands that, which have been used as concentration camps at periods of history. Uh, one is Molat and the other one is Goli Otok, uh, which translates as Naked Island. And this was uh, a place that was particularly uh, barbaric in times of Tito and so it has a very dark history there. There are all sorts of quite interesting animals you can find on uh, on, on Dalmatian Islands and uh, if you go to the island of Sholta uh, you can find uh, an ostrich farm. So you can take the kids along there and you can, you can buy your ostrich eggs and that will be uh, a nice addition to what is a very interesting island which is famous also for its honey, for its olive oil and also for its indigenous wine. Number 23, perhaps one of the reasons that Croatia is so safe is because the godfather of fingerprinting, uh, dactyloscopy, Ivan Vucic, was born on the island of Hua in the Hua town on the waterfront. He emigrated to uh, Argentina and in the late 19th century he was the first person ever to work to solve a murder with blood-stained fingerprints and so uh, because of that the whole concept of fingerprinting and all the science behind that um, it, that all developed globally because of a man from Hua. Number 24, this is a region which has an incredible number of indigenous grape varieties where you can only find them in Croatia. Croatia has, it's said, 130 indigenous grape varieties, not all of them very good. And its most famous one is um, Tulinic Kashelanski, uh, which was the uh, original Zinfandel. But if you go to the islands, you will find individual islands which have their own quality wine made from grapes that only grow on that island. So, for example, you have on the island of Korčula a grape variety called Gurk, which is for me the best white wine in Croatia. And it's only grown in the sandy sort of uh, vineyards of Lombarda down in the south below Korčula town. They only make about 33,000 bottles a year, but it's uh, it's one of the nicest ones and you can't find it anywhere else. If you go to uh, Vis, you have Vugova, which is another white wine, but that's only grown on Vis. If you go to uh, Kurk a bit further up, you have uh, Zlatina, and that's the that's another white white variety that only grows on Kurk. The one island where you have an incredible range of uh, indigenous grape varieties is the island of Hua, which has a wine growing tradition dating back to uh, the, the arrival of the ancient Greeks back in 2,400 years ago. You have grapes that only grow there, the most famous of which is Bogdanusha, which is a light white wine, which translates as a gift from God. You have Dunakusha, which only grows or mostly grows above 400 meters uh, above sea level. And with Hua only being 621 meters high, there's not a lot of room there to grow that. There's a, a wonderful winemaker called Teo Hulic in Yelsa. He has dedicated some of his time to trying to develop the lost grape varieties of Hua. So when last time I saw him, he asked me for a drink. He poured me a glass of Palerusha. And this was a grape variety that most people on Hua have never heard about. And he manages to make about 70 bottles a year. So he has a wonderful slow cooked, he's a, gr a great chef, a slow cooked dinner called the Forgotten Grape Varieties of Hua. It's fantastic. So. Wherever you go on, on the islands, you have something original and unique like that. And so every single island is different. It's, uh, it's, it's quite magical, really. And number 25, um, th this was something that really surprised me when I came to Hua. Uh, to it's the oldest organized tourism in the whole of Europe. So back in 1868, on May the 15th, the Hua Health Society opened its doors and they were catering to the convalescing uh, aristocracy from the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And so they were come down to Hua, which they called at the time the Austrian Madeira. And they were coming uh, also in winter and they were coming for the temperate climate. And this has been acknowledged as the uh, oldest organized tourism on Hua. And these are just 25 things. I could give you 25 more because every single island is different. It's unique. It's magical. You can't visit them all in your life, but try and visit a few because they really are fantastic.